This is episode 75 of the Podcraft Beer Show for Monday, January 24th, 2022. In this week's show, Chris and Charlie review four craft beers from the following four different breweries. Pure Project Brewing, Cellar Maker Brewing Company, Green Cheek Beer Company, and Humble Sea Brewing Company. The first craft beer is a sour ale, then an IPA, and then two different styles of barley wine. This is the Podcraft Beer Show. I'm your host, Chris. We got your other host, Charlie. Still missing uh, tech guy, Steve? He abandoned us. I don't know where he's at. He's probably dead somewhere in a ditch, for all I know. Sound like my grandma. That's what I was thinking. So the, uh, <laughs> back at it again. I'm uh, worried about him, just to say the least. I'm sure uh, Steve's going to land on his feet. Uh, I don't doubt that he will. We're going to drink some beers today, though. Ooh, nice Allegedly. start there. Going right up to the Crystal Geyser, huh? That's it. Yikes. See what you got. Uh, what do you got on, on, uh, we on get, store? Uh, we got a Cellar Makers, uh, 100% Galaxy Hopped IPA, and it's called Galaxy Blaster. Um, never had this before, so kind of excited about it. Going to crack a locket. We're going to go through this, and then a Pure Project, and a Green Cheek Barley Wine, believe it or not, and then uh, a Kooks. Barley wine, right? There it is. Yeah, that 20, uh, going to do a, a Humble C. Um, Look at that. Barley wine. So this first beer, Charlie, that you uh, that you came up with, it's a, uh, um, you pointed out, it's Galaxy Blaster, uh, made by Cellar Maker in, in San Francisco. Mm. Um, comes Smells comes in great. at about 6.8% uh, ABV. It says it's uh, Galaxy uh, with its crazy tropical aroma that's laced with zesty tangerine and ginger spice. Is one of those hops that doesn't require other hops with it to make a beer pop. Galaxy beers always have a load of aroma, I'm uh, agree with flavors, that. and the haziest haze. Uh, this beer is no exception, exception as it drinks its way above its weight class. Absolutely true so far. Tastes, yeah. tastes pretty delicious. It's unique. I mean, it's not the uh, whatever you're, what, what was that? Your phone is too close to the wiring, I believe. You think we had a little magnetic interference yeah either that's a plate in my head could be <laughs> ah yeah so, what do you think oh man it's like you just take a take a big uh smell of that just it certainly pops with those tropical notes it's fresh that's for sure they got cool can art if you ask me sort of the galaga or that uh no it was uh galaxy blaster blaster remember that that video or that little game this is a phenomenal beer. It is. I mean, it certainly hits with that, that, uh, um, you know, you get slapped with a little bit of that, uh, just the bitterness up front. Yeah. I, it's not even that bitter, to be honest with you. Man, that's good. I wonder how many IBUs it has. 49, I think it says. That's, 49 IBUs. That's, it's a lot, really, for, for me. But, uh, didn't we go here? We did. It's been, uh, um, about 112 years ago. But everybody there was total hipster, weren't they? They were. We actually came in, I think, uh, shorts and uh, flip, -flops. flip flops, which was probably their first cue. We were from out of town. <laughs> it was about 40 degrees and windy. <laughs> it was chilly, that's for sure. But man, we did not stop us. We went right in there and bellied up to the bar, literally. Or I did, you yep. being not it. But yeah, yeah there was a, that was a cool little spot. Yeah. That's a really good beer. I, uh, you know, a little hazy, um, but. Certainly comes through with a, a punch in the face with the the smell, a lot of a lot of tropical notes. It's and, it um, smells for having one hop in there. It smells really really good. I mean, it's just the aroma is out front, up top, and all around. I'm digging it. I should have bought more. That's now good. I, know. Uh, I think I got that from uh, Bottle Crap last time we were down there. Apparently, allegedly. We ran into some some good action there, huh? <clears throat> yeah, no, I uh, I'm a big fan of uh, Bottle Craft and what they got going on down there. Wow, I love that. There's more of it, right? There is a little you. more. Hey, so you know, I was. Um, do you have any decent beers this week, Charlie? Uh, what do they drink? Uh, no, I had a Bloody Mary the other day, so that was my my go-to. Yeah, I um I didn't really have. Uh, 
any any craft beers of, of note this week. But I did see um, uh, San Diego Beer News. Um, they they just wrote up uh, um, Mother Earth is uh, releasing a hazy IPA uh, um, for Nate Nate Sirocco. Okay, this week it should be uh, this next week. I think we'll see it in. Um, uh, you know what they should call it? What's that? Nate on Nate on Nate on Nate. You know why? No, why is that? Because that was his best IPA that, or hazy he liked. Was yeah. that Blanc on Blanc on Blanc on Blanc? Yeah. So they um, they actually um, point out over here. Uh, this is it's a, um, a memorial from from Mother Earth. Um, there's a picture of him on the can. Awesome. Um, and then they. Uh, Let's see. Yeah, they, they can label of the portrait of uh, Big Nate. Um, and then it's uh, it also includes uh, Sirocco's favorite, Nelson uh, Nelson Hops. Cool. So that's uh, that's pretty cool. Watch for that coming out this next week. I'm going to get some. Yeah. May have to go up there. I haven't been up there in a long time. Yeah, they said it's going to be um, released locally. So should be seeing it probably at uh, Valley Farms here shortly. Oh, that'd be great. I'll yeah. take some of that and run with it. Yes, sir. Not too far. What about you? Do you have anything to drink? Mm-mm. I did have a burning beard. Did you? A BBR, yeah. I, I you know, I, I'm guilty. <laughs> Good. Um, I uh, Finally. <clears throat> yeah, I like to have, you know, just some, some really light beers around the house recently, especially when I'm trying to trying to drink a few cocktails. And, uh, you know, sometimes... Uh, you are. You're the Manhattan man, aren't you? Uh, I had I I actually didn't have a Manhattan. There's no time. man in Manhattan. You knew that. I, that's what you keep telling me. But the um, <laughs> uh, what did I? Uh, just some old fashions. I think are about uh, about it. Just JD and Coke, man. That's you. No, all day long. That's not me. Ah, <laughs> uh, that sounds good though, doesn't it? No, that does not sound no, good. I'm not a JD and Coke guy either. So, about all I can do is a is a spicy margarita up there at the. What is that, Freebird or Bird? Ooh. What was the name of that place we were at? The Bird, the the Shorebird. Seabird. Seabird. Yeah, right there in Oceanside. Check it out. Delicious spicy margarita. And then uh, Bloody Marys, that's me. That's all it is. 100%. I'm happy with it. That's tasty beer, Charlie. Good uh, Good call. Yeah, you're, uh, you're one to know. What's your next bottle that you have up? Check this out. This thing... Got a cork. Shh, don't tell anybody. It looks like you're uh, shifting over to there. Uh, uh -oh. little... I think I just broke our wine opener. Just can't have nice wow. things. That thing's history. Now you're in trouble. Yeah, pretty sure I am. So this is a uh, oak barrel-aged sour ale with Cabernet Sauvignon and Cabernet Franc grapes. Uh, Tau is a beer wine hybrid built on Black Sears grapes and aged in oak barrels. Uh, these awesome. Cab uh, Cab Sauvignon and Cabernet Franc uh, grapes come from a wild, remote, biodynamic vineyard atop Napa's Howell Mountain. During the 2019 harvest, Black Sears shared a literal ton of their spent grape skins with us. We brewed a beer that was fermented on the skins from the wine fermentation. We then pressed the skins and aged the beer for a year in Bordeaux wine barrels before bottle conditioning with their house strain of breads. Uh, burgundy in color with a light pink head. Expect this ale to deliver essence of black cherries, plums, and cranberry together with pronounced minerality and a fair amount of funk. We love the way these grapes, so unique to that rub rugged and biologically diverse mountaintop, uh, shine in this special collaboration that will simultaneously satisfy your cravings for both beer and wine. What do you think of that, Charlie? It certainly looks like it it pours that burgundy color with the light pink head. It is definitely. I mean, it's it's super carbonated too. Um, it's it's got a huge head on it right now because I poured it from a, de a high altitude. But it's gosh, that's good. Man, if, was this in my was this in my uh, cooler out there? Good thing I didn't know about it. I would have definitely destroyed that earlier in the week. Yeah, that, I think that was part of the club last year. Well, lucky you. Well, lucky you ended up in your fridge. <laughs> 
it was well worth it. Let me tell you, this was a, 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 you see these things and they're really not, the labels are not impressive. I mean, it's just a. They do really simple labels over there at, at Pure Project. It's like a Japanese symbol. I guess what probably it? says Tao. Tao. Yeah. If I was a. I can't tell, but uh, looks like a little outhouse with a light on top of it. <laughs> I mean, that's, I can't tell you much more than that, but uh, it is really good. Smells good, tastes good, and it is funky. So the, um, I believe this actually may be uh, a retread for us here on the show. But probably really? Just as, uh, I don't remember this. It's because it was episode, uh, if, I, if I was to just um, guess, I'd say it was probably episode 37. <laughs> <laughs> wow, what a memory. <laughs> you look it up. Yeah, that's it. Just, oh, yeah, what a coincidence. Well, Steve will Steve will work it out. He'll he'll edit it to make it sound like it was involved with the same episode or something. It is. Um, it's actually. Uh, you know, I'm gonna have to look back through my notes and see what I thought of it that time. I actually just realized that we we had had this previously. Um, wow. As I think Steve had checked it in. You know what? I think it's as good now as it was then. Yeah. No. It. Um, it's certainly you can taste the, the the minerality. You know, like the the minerally. You know, it it certainly. You can taste that kind of the ruggedness there. Um, certainly, I don't, it, it, it certainly isn't too sour. Not at all. I mean, it's, it's, I would say it's if somebody's little, starting out on sours, this would be one you want to start out on. Yeah, no, I mean, I think. Um, it's easy enough to drink. Gosh, it is super easy to drink, huh? Yeah, that's, that's a light, just delicious little flavor in there. Little yeah. funky on the back end. It's like. But nothing too wild. I like funk. Here we go. Mm. We should, you know what? Gosh. Too bad they didn't make big bottles of that. That would be a great one for a big bottle. Don't you think? It'd be a lot of, a lot of beer. I'm done buying big bottles. Like yeah. big, big bottles. You yeah. talking like. Uh, yeah. Magnums. Yeah. <laughs> Golly, there's just, it's so difficult to. Uh, yeah, it is. I'm, uh, I'm going to have to break down and buy a new uh, cork opener. That's what it appears. That thing just blew up on just me. Just right? exploded. Right there in front of everybody, man. It was vaporized. Terrible. All right. What do you think? I think it's good. Um, I, I mean, I, I, I certainly, uh, the wine beer hybrid, right? It, it's, uh, you know, I, I like the minerality of it or, you know, kind of the uh, that flavor profile. I like that it's not super, uh, super funky. I like it because it's super colorful and it's carbonated. It's doggone delicious, too. Mm. I'll do that in day of the week right there. So now, Charlie. What? It's a moment you've been waiting for. I think this will be pretty interesting. I'm, I've, I haven't i have had this style before, so it's going to be an interesting thing for me to run into. So here we go. So this first one is uh, Proper Gubbins. It's an English-style barley wine coming Ooh. in at 11.2 ABV. A blend of two batches, one brewed in November 2020 and the other brewed in January 2021. Oh, let me tell you right now. They aged this in stainless until uh, December 2021 and then canned a couple of weeks back. Uh, it says, um, a beer that celebrates some of the good qualities that uh, that age and slow oxidation can play in a beer with of this strength. Uh, the colors are rich mahogany. The body's thick uh, with good, well-rounded bitterness to match. The flavor profile is all mission figs, fruitcake, and rum and cola. I haven't drank it yet. The, the, Are you scared, Charlie? I'm not scared, but I'm just, I'm smelling this thing, and I smell like this is what you'd smell when you're standing in the brewery area of a of a massive brewery. You know, the wort. It just smells like business. Gosh, it's it's pretty doggone strong. Oy. I'm going to get some nose off it here, but gosh. Um, it's, it says mahogany. I don't know about mahogany. It looks like leather is what it looks like to me. So we're, this is a British English style barley wine. So I've never had this. So it's, it's going to be unique. I think. That's what they claim. Oh, uh, no. Big negative for you, Charlie. Uh, I, the figs, uh, not so, a fan. Yeah. It's certainly like. It smells super malty, right? Like, like you were saying, like, gosh, I can't, I can't even drink that. Sorry. Yeah, it's a good I mean, thing you had your your backup over there. Yeah, my King Sue is 
my my uh, palate cleanser. palate cleanser. So the um, so here we are. It it certainly it smells that. Excuse me for a moment. Really malty. It, it smells. You know, I mean, like a like a barley wine would. Um, it certainly. You know, the the color is that. Uh, um, <laughs> So it's uh, you know like a tan, like a dark. Uh, I said leathery. Yeah, Charlie did say leathery. Um, I, I'd say rich mahogany. Yeah, that certainly falls in line. Let's get a big old swig of that. Try this one on for size. Good luck. I, I you know what I'm. Here we are. When we were at uh, Horace's uh, tasting, he brought out uh, this uh, shark nato, shark nato. Uh, Barley wine he did for Tornados. Mm-hmm. Was it their anniversary or was it, what was it? Yeah, I'm not certain what the Barley Wine Festival or whatever they were doing it for. Let me tell you what, I thought that was the best thing that I drank there that day. And it was fantastic. I mean, if I get some more of those, I would buy them. But I'm sure he's got very limited supply of those. That's actually not that bad. Tastes like toffee. You know, it's um, it's not something that I would not go the in. Toffee, and, I eat. Well, I wouldn't go, you know, and say, "Hey, let me get a twenty-four ounce of that <laughs> uh, that old chap." Gosh, but uh, it certainly is. Um, I, I don't mind a, a little bit of. I would have a tough time killing a sixteen ounce can. I'm not a huge barley wine guy. Um, I'd have a tough time finishing a small taste of it. Of this, I mean, oh, one, I could certainly one big, do that. No, I don't think I could. That brings back memories of torture. It's like drunken raisins there. Figs. I could taste figs all day long in there. Not a big fig guy? No, I don't like figs. Unless they're in Newtons. Huh. You know, that's about all I can eat of figs. <clears throat> well, you're probably really going to enjoy our next bottle then. I, I'm, it can't be any worse, I'll tell you that. Well, so, so it sounds like that bottle might be a hard pass on Charlie, so we're going to let him proceed to our final bottle. Uh, which is uh, 2021 Kooks Blend number six. Uh, since, you know, Charlie's not a big fan of those guys across the pond, uh, we're going to run with an American barley wine. This is a blend of American and honey barley wine, uh, okay, bourbon barrel aged in, better. in Dickel and E.T. Uh, bourbon barrels. They say the uh, the aroma is going to be honeycomb, uh, honeycomb, date, vanilla, maple, bourbon soaked raisins. Uh, flavors of toffee, caramel, cherry, whiskey, vanilla bean, maple candy, and molasses. Got a medium to a full mouthfeel with a balanced viscosity. It's, this is already better, I can tell you that. Well, so that's, that's uh, you know, certainly pouring a quite a bit darker. Yeah. Yeah, quite a bit. And you, you know can I mean? see that you can smell the honey in there instead of just, ugh, you know, peat moss or whatever they put in that dang thing. <laughs> astroturf whatever so you're not a big fan of asphalt uh, of that first <laughs> i'm sorry i you know i haven't really said green cheek made a bad beer but guess what it you know what it's it not, not your style yeah. not your style yeah, right it. you know i mean you're you're yeah i mean you're being more of a uh well i i just drink nothing but barley wines it doesn't hey tell me what you've what have you done for me lately <laughs> <laughs> i don't think i could do that that the was when i was a younger man yeah. And it was, uh, I think I was drinking for effect at that point. Yeah. I remember you telling me uh, back when all I used to drink was IPAs that I had no culture. Mm-hmm. Here it is. No, I said you have no palate. No, I think. Uh, Dude, this is 100% better than that. Is it? Well. It's a different style, though, so. Well, it's a barley wine. Yeah. Well, what I'm saying, though, is that this well, tastes in the category of drinkable. That wasn't, uh, it wasn't an impressive to me that uh you could drink that other stuff i mean god bless them um uh, uh green cheek has got got it going on on most of their beers so can't complain but this is in a better category of drinkable what are so, they what's they, that what are they uh what's the jump in at abv wise 13.1 that's a big on jump. uh the humble c and uh Eleven point two on the uh, the green cheek. So this um this humble sea is a is a, a blend of three different barrels. Uh, barrel one was double barrel aged honey barley wine, aged six months in New American oak, then racked in GD bourbon for twelve months. Barrel number two was barley wine aged eleven months in twelve uh, year old ET bourbon barrels, and uh, barrel three was barley wine aged twenty seven months in GD uh, bourbon barrels. 
So you got George Dickin and uh, what's the other one? Uh, GT or ET. Um, Extraterrestrial. There it is. <laughs> I don't know who it is. Ernest Tubb. That's what Ernie, I said earlier. Ernie Tubbs? Yeah. Um, hey, do Foggy Mountain Breakdown. <laughs> is it, uh, what is that? Uh, um, you didn't look up Ernest Tubb, did you? Elmer T. Lee. Oh, there you go. Buffalo Trace there. Wow. Um, I think I'd rather have the bourbon or whiskey than this stuff, though. Yeah? Well, I probably wouldn't drink it, but I think I'd rather have it, I would imagine. But I don't know. This this is better than the first one. I'll have to test 100%. You'd rather, yeah, you're just not. It's, Look, I, already, I poured a little more in my glass, and I'm drinking. You did. You're running, making a run at it. Well, I'm good to, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that that was a lot of pushback for the, the old boys at Humble Sea this week. In regards to their uh, the Kooks Club, what's going on? Just uh, it sounds like there was a couple of releases, and then they previously there's been the um, Stacy. Uh, she was she led the Kooks Club, and and always great, you know, phenomenal experience with her. But she was uh, she was pitched out this week. They uh, you know previously they went to OZNR, o, um, whatever the the app is. You know, we get the beers through. Um, the guys at North Park utilize it for their uh, bottle releases. That's what the the whole club went online to that application this Ooh. year. It's been a kind of, you know, it's been kind of a... I don't know if I like that. Well, and, you know, I mean, I think it's taken a personal, a little bit of personal touch, but she got bounced and there was a lot of, there was a lot of, uh, a lot of talk on the, on the Kooks Club, people wanting, uh, demanding refunds on their... Uh, you know, membership membership based on them just kind of bouncing the the human aspect of the yeah, club. I agree. I would, I would I would be involved in that. The protesting. A lot of uh I go up there and drink somebody else's beer in their front yard. Yeah. Yeah. Well so yeah, people pushing back just saying, hey, this smells like a sellout. You're using this big uh this big app and now um they're big timing them. Big timing them. That's it. It's like uh <laughs> Cal Ripken big timing you. Yeah, we'll see. I, you know, I mean, I think there gets, they, they did a phenomenal job and, and, you know, I'm sure that, that comes to at a cost, right? Like, you know, being part of that Kooks club, like, and, and their, their beer shipping, um, like it was phenomenal. It was a great experience that first year. Why would year they change it? It's, I mean, it's probably cheaper to have, oh, you know, this, this application kind of run all the, the front end. You don't have to have as many people maybe, um, I'm not certain what the, I mean, I mean I'm sure it comes down to cost, a certain aspect of it. But so the, it's about the money. Oh, I, I mean, I would assume there. Why else would you switch over there? It's not like you have a greater reach, you know. I mean, it's no, but the what, front end. Like, what's the cost of you running think that, that application? Those guys were, you know, for the people, and you know, happens to them all, huh, Charlie? I don't understand it. I mean, they're they're going crazy or something. I mean, they had a good thing going, unless and you know, and then they say let's change it. All right, so that's phenomenal. Yeah, back to that beer. Enough complaining about these uh, these uh, corporate sellouts. Oh, yeah, the sellout. We'll talk about beer back when they were uh, before they sold out. <laughs> Humble. No, that's like nice and drunk and raisins right there, Ooh. just boozy raisins. Is that what it has in it? No, I mean it tastes like jammed or full of raisins and it smells like honey to me. Man, that's tasty. Uh, like that it. certainly is better than the the proper uh, proper gubbins. Mm. Um, but as, as you should expect, you know, I mean, it's three barrel aged beers, vice, the vice of barley wine that was aged in stainless. So it's certainly taking on the, you know, the bourbon characteristics and just a little more mature. Um, I think that the green cheek one is an attempt and the, uh, kooks one is an actual plan of the beer and doing something unique and different with it. Compared to the green cheek, green, green cheek it was like, hey, well, let's see if we can do this. In my opinion. So the, um, yeah, no, that was. Uh, I can tell you exactly where I was and how I tasted barley wine for the first time. You want to hear that little yep, story? Let's hear it. So I was up in Washington State. Uh, Janet's uh, sister was getting married, and there's a place up there called Fishtail Ales. I don't even know if it's still in business or not, but I would imagine it is. Anyways, went in there, and I'm drinking a West Coast IPA, shocker, and uh, enjoying the heck out of myself. And there's this older gentleman, and I was probably 40. Yeah, 
Yeah, that's it. I was probably in my 40s and uh, or late 30s. And I'm sitting there and I'm looking at this guy. And he's probably my age now or older. And he says, I said, what are you drinking? Because it was in this little tiny glass, you know, like, smaller yeah, glass. Yeah, yeah. It probably wasn't like a mug of beer, whatever. you know. Yeah, it was tiny. He goes, I'm drinking barley wine. You want to try it? And I'm like, what is it? And he goes, it's barley wine for crying out loud. <laughs> I'm like, okay, give me a shot of that. And I just, you know, took a big swig and went, oh my gosh, that is unbelievably good. So proceeded to order one myself, not knowing it was 14% alcohol. And it uh, kind of bent me around the corner a little bit. So I was probably running around naked for a while, but, you know, I think I recovered pretty well. <laughs> I mean, it was that was crazy, man. Yeah. And then so from then on, well, from then on for a while, that's all I drank is barley wine. I'll never forget the story where I was sitting at my uh, my niece's wedding down here in San Diego, and uh, <laughs> I was sitting outside. I brought a six pack of uh, uh, Sierra Nevada Bigfoot with me, and uh, I'm out there swigging a bottle of that in the parking lot because the line to get to the beer was ridiculous everybody in the party was there you know everybody in the wedding was there and it was just people were ordering like five drinks at a time and it was it was a nightmare crazy line so i said well i'm not waiting in that stupid line i'm gonna go out and drink my own beer so i get out to the parking lot and i'm swinging on this uh, bigfoot and my brother comes out and he says, what are you doing? I said, I'm drinking a beer. And he goes, uh, hey, can I get one of those? That line is crazy in there. And I'm like, yeah. So I handed him a bottle of Bigfoot. <laughs> I mean, he takes a big hit off of it too. And looks at me, his eyes are bugging <laughs> out. And he spits this out. <laughs> that is not beer, he says. Yeah, what he's like, I'd rather that? go wait in that line. Yeah, I'd rather be beating around the head and shoulders than drink that stuff. And I'm like, it's barley wine. It's the same thing, you know? And he goes, what? Is, I've never even heard of that. And I said, yeah, it's it's an acquired taste, I guess. So that was pretty funny, though. I mean, to seem squig. I mean, just a giant bug off that bottle, man. <laughs> yeah. I could get used to this. You yeah. Know, this uh, this second, and that's yeah. I mean, I think you take the the same approach I took to uh, you know stouts. Like, start accumulating really really good stouts, and then start drinking them because like if something's crafted well, right? If it lasts, yeah. I'm probably not. A, you know, like had I started eating sushi at a gas station, I probably wouldn't be as big of a fan of sushi as I am. Or El Pastor tacos that were sitting in the window for about seven hours. That was a bad. That was a <laughs> bad play. <laughs> I'm thinking about uh, that all the time. Although, taco stand, El Pastor Tacos, the only way to go right now, in my personal opinion. Make some, uh, they, they make some good tacos down there. Mm. Well, so Charlie, I guess, uh, um, so we had, you know, we, we had the uh, four different beers. We had the Cellar Maker Galaxy Blaster. Um, we, we followed that up with uh, Pure Projects uh, Beer Wine Hybrid Tau. Um we came behind that with uh, Green Cheeks Proper Gubbins, uh, an English style barley wine, and uh, it ended it with that 2021 Kooks Club number six. That that uh, barley wine, that was pretty good. Wine. What would you? Uh, what was your favorite beer? Uh, I'm gonna go with the Galaxy um, Blaster, mm -hmm. and in the order of Galaxy Blaster, Tau, Kooks, Topo Chico. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Calistoga, whatever, anything other than that green cheek. So beer. that was uh, that ranks right up as probably uh, yeah, not I, your most favorite beer of 2021. I'm thinking the 2022. The 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 beer that you used to be able to find in the store that said beer on it, would and it, that's it. Better. The white label stuff would have been ten times better than that, and it was because I've drank some of that. The uh, is that I'm your gonna order? Go, uh, I'm going to go. I think I'm going to go that 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 Kooks Club uh, 2021. What? That one is as probably. This is where there should be a music fanfare right in between here. So, Steve, if you're teching this up for us. Like, bah, bah, bah. No. Bah, 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 bah. <laughs> no, I, I, I liked it. I, I really like that. Like, I could sit and drink that for uh, uh, while, while I'm Several watching minutes. a football game. For sure. The, um, the <laughs> so Galaxy Blaster was good. Uh, the, the the proper goblins, nah. I, I'm, I'm going to go the, the Kooks, the Galaxy Blaster, the Tau 
followed by the the gubbins uh, on on the back end of it. I, I mean, I might let him I'm in the car. I'm going to have to agree with you're, the back end of it. Yeah. You're not even letting them get in the vehicle. No. Like, they're walking no. home. We're going to put them on the roof rack. Yeah. If like those things Edna. slide up and hit somebody, good for them. Yeah, you weren't uh, you weren't too excited with that. Gosh, I'm I'm disappointed. But, uh, you know, the thing is, is that Green Cheek is such a good brewery. I mean, you can't blame them for trying. I mean, they probably had somebody in there pushing it for months, if not years. Because that's the first. I don't know when they made this, but let me tell you, didn't do what you were looking for. No, gosh, no. Well, I mean, throw some adjuncts in there, and it'll destroy all the rest of that ness. We'll, we'll see. Cheers, brother. Cheers. We hope you have enjoyed today's show. If you would like to subscribe to this show via your favorite podcast player application, then head over to the podcraft.com website and look for the subscribe links. You can also get all the links mentioned in this podcast, pictures and videos of all the beers we try, and other good information at thepodcraft.com. The site also has links to send us direct feedback and to connect with us on social media. Thank you so much for sharing your time and attention with us. For Chris and Charlie, this is Tech Guy Steve, signing off for this week's The Podcraft Beer Show. Have a super awesome rest of your day. Podcraft Beer Show podcast is licensed under Creative Commons Attribution Share Alike 4.0 International. All rights reserved 2020 through 2022. The podcast is produced by AztecMedia.net. If you have questions, then please email the Podcraft Podcast at gmail.com. Fair use notice. Reference material and media have been placed within this medium for informational, educational, and discussion purposes only in compliance with the fair use criteria established in Section 107 of the Copyright Act of 1976. It should also be noted that the opinions expressed in this podcast are those of the participants and are not endorsed by the participants' previous, current, or future employers or advertisers. You're still here? It's over. Go home. Go.